Short Term 12 is based on experiences that I had working at a, a residential facility for at-risk teenagers, which was my first job out of college. Um, it was like four years after working there that I, I wanted to try to organize some of those thoughts that I had while, my, while I was working there into a, a short film, and that was the genesis of Short Term 12. And, and then in terms of your short versus the film, what did you decide to elaborate on? Was there anything that you cut? Yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the main difference and the reason why Brie Larson is here is the main, the main change that I made <laughs> it was changing the main character from a male supervisor in the short and to a, to a female supervisor in the feature. Um, which was really my way of, <laughs> of creating a new challenge for myself that made that made the experience of writing feel fresh again, um, and made me made me made me really excited about the story again. Well, also I think that what what I what I loved when I watched the film was the book and stories. You know, John tells the story yeah. in the beginning, and then you know they're they're telling the story at the end. Was that something that sort of manifested itself later on, or that was always in the script? I mean, that, that came out early on in the script, because, um, and it was a direct result of interviews that I did with, with certain pe people who were, um, had been working in places like this for way longer than I ever did. One common, common thread that I found with all the different people that I interviewed were, was that they are all incredible storytellers, and I some of those stories in the, in the opening and closing are almost verbatim just me writing down what I had recorded in those interviews. And it was, um, so that I, I knew that the aspect of storytelling and was, was something that I really uh, was excited to have be a part of the movie. It was a really nice way to introduce us to the characters without like beating us over the head with who they were, like too much exposition. I mean, I sort of love that we just jumped right into it. Um, I want to hear about some of the happy accidents in the film when you guys were shooting. We were, okay, so we were getting on the bus, and okay, you, you tell well, the leading up story. Are we really talking about this? Yeah, sure, why not? We, um, <laughs> we, we just stole we these Yeah, shots. we didn't have money to like rent a bus, so we, we just figured out a way to sneak on there and hide the camera in a backpack, and we had our sound guy disguised and everything, everyone was mic'd up. All the producers and we, so got we all just, up in civilian clothes. We all clothes. just got onto the bus at this, like, at, as, as if we didn't know, no one knew each other, but we all just got on the bus and we were just shooting a scene, and I was sitting next to my DP looking at a monitor inside of a right. backpack. Like um, your clamshell, yeah. like, in a sweatshirt or something? But we had, yeah. like, we had, like, diagrams of the bus, and we had figured out, like, orders pictures. of people getting said, on. Okay, Caitlin, you sit here, Bree, you sit here, and... And really Caitlin's dad. So my dad was in front of me, and all the producers were in front of him, and they were, you know, getting on the bus, like, nonchalantly, just looking like they were taking their seats. And my dad sat right where I was supposed to be sitting in the scene, and I'm like... Which was and his, we were his rolling. only instruction was to sit anywhere but that one seat. <laughs> he said, just don't sit in that seat. And my dad sat in the well, seat. Well, nerd. You know, it's like, don't look yeah. over there, and then... Yeah, awesome. I love watching that scene where right it's just like you watch that scene now, it's like eighty percent of the civilians on the bus are people that worked on the movie. My I think one of my favorite happy accidents is you know, we have that super slow mo shot at the end of the film. One where, of my favorite you know, where we're all running and and um I remember a guy got really fixated on um I have a coffee cup for most of that story and then when we take off running after Sammy there was like this one pillar of this fence that I was like I put my coffee cup down there really quick and take off because we were running at full speed and um, there was one take where I remember it fell and I was like oh, I screwed everything up I dropped the coffee cup <laughs> and that's the take that's in the film and, that's and so the, the first time I saw it I was like is yeah. this the one no, and I was like reaching, but I saw it falling in like super, super slow mo. And now, like, I watched it again, at, you know, like when I saw it again at South by Southwest, I came around to it, and then I was like, you know, I'm glad they used that. <laughs> I like that the coffee cup falls. I think another thing that was really noticeable about the film is it felt like really, really lived in from the characters to the wardrobe to the production design. So, Tell me sort of from your perspective, sort of how you relate that to your keys. And then I also want to hear from the actors, the conversations you had, Dustin, you know, before you started. Yeah, the, I mean, the feeling of, 
of this place being lived in was uh, a definite concern from the beginning and honestly a lot of it had was just once once a room was set and looked great then we just went through and started tearing things apart and and aging things and and you know sanding down the walls to make it feel like it, it has been like a, a mural had been painted there um, I'm not sure if that's legal. Is that here? Huh? Oh. This? Is it? Are we? Like, I actually do think it's illegal, but I mean, we <laughs> won't <laughs> tell anyone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop. Can we get this we'll dude. Do it. Can we, get yeah, can we get this dude in Ash? <laughs> I know. Where are you gonna Ash? Where? Here, Ash, in there. In the guacamole. Not in the guacamole. I don't think it's guacamole, it's but cool. not in the guacamole in there. <laughs> That'll work. Okay, yeah. cool. We're chilling. We're vibing. We're vibing. So vibing. We're rambling. <laughs> we are rambling. All right. So cool. back to what we, basically this lived-in feel that we're talking about. Um. Yeah. So I mean, we we just spent a lot of time making things feel like a lot of accidents have happened throughout the happy accidents. The, yes, happy accidents. Um, most of our locations took place in one area, including everything that happened in the facility, um, the the hospital scenes, and um, the psychiatrist scenes. Like all those, we 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 figured out ways to make it happen in one location. Right. John, before you signed on to the project, what was sort of the conversations you and Dustin had about your character? Well, um. The, what we our conversation was kind of limited in that like we just skyped. That was yeah. the first time that I met Dustin. Was I got sent the script, and I tore through it and I read it and um, and I loved it from page one. I knew that it was something really 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 special. And um and I wrote back to my agent and was like, what's the next step? I love it. You know they're like we want to get you to Skype with the director. And so we met on our computer screens. And, you, uh, you just, so you did a video Skype or you just did like a talking Skype? We did, we did a video Skype okay. and, uh, and I was in New York and Dustin was in LA and uh, I, I had been uh, unemployed for several months and so I just kind of just, I hadn't had a haircut in months and I just grew out this beard because I didn't have a job and I remember we were Skyping and Dustin was like, cool beard, don't, um, <laughs> don't shave and I was like, I won't. <laughs> And I was thrilled about that because I think I've, every job I think I've ever had, people are like, "Cut your hair and shave and and pretend that you're younger." And uh, it was like the <laughs> first time somebody had asked me to do the opposite, and so I was excited about that. And then you know when we skyped, I remember we didn't talk too much. Uh, we didn't talk in, in any real in any real depth about the character. It wasn't really until I met Bree um, when I got to LA a couple of days before we started shooting that um, Destin kind of so deftly orchestrated this awesome way for us to get to know each other which was we arranged just to go out to dinner one night that to, was question to get to know each other yeah. and and um and Destin gave me the, an envelope that full of kind of conversation starters um some of which were just kind of casual get to know each other kind of things and others had more to do with the character's backstory and so we we sat and had a nice dinner together and then you know every five minutes or so we would reach in and pull out another piece of paper from this envelope and it would be, you know, what are, what are your hopes and fears about one day maybe being a parent? Or how do you think Grace and Mason, what do you think their first date was? And, and so it was just, what was amazing about it was that it, was just, it just felt very, very casual like we were having dinner. And then by the end of it, all of a sudden, we had just organically built all of this backstory for well, these that characters. that was another thing I was going to ask, too. Like, are you the type of actor to say, like, my character went to this university? Or, you know, how, how that story, <laughs> like, do you get Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's one of the most fun parts about it, about yeah. about doing this, is that you get to really track and imagine. You know, you might not, you know, don't need to tell anyone. It, you can, it can be just things that you even just right. think to yourself. But um, that's one of the things that I get so excited to do. And so it was really fun to get to go in on it together, to, to, to start, you know, really owning mm -hmm. the characters and really, you know, figuring out what their history was. And so it it does this amazing thing where you, all of a sudden you show up and you're starting to shoot and and you're not even so much of that work you're not even having to do because now you're sharing this backstory that you can just call upon that's going to be in your head whether you tell each other to remember it or not it's just going to be there um and so that i think was that was just a, a really great way that destin kind of pushed us 
um, into the characters, and it was it was it was really helpful and easy. That was the thing about it was it didn't feel like we were doing any homework. It just yeah. happened very very organically, and then it was just there, you know, like you know, ready for us when we started shooting. And then what about like you know Keith? What about your ideas of how your character? Did you have ideas of how your character dressed? I don't know. I just wear colorful, weird shit. So I was wearing like this all over print. Uh, leaves and things like that. And they were like, that looks kind of cool. Like, you should wear that. And like, so they actually right. took you from your regular life and said, like, okay. Yeah. Except for the yeah. hat. I wouldn't wear that hat. Like, I like hats the like The captain this. hat. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So basically, it's just basically shit that I always wear except, oh, those shoes, too. Those are, yeah. I don't wear that kind of stuff. But Marcus. What stuff. kind of shoes did Marcus wear? I don't remember. Some high top. Like he had a lot of sneakers. Black high top shoes. Are you wearing are those sneakers? Oh, yeah, I wear socks kind of like him, too. Like right. He wears yeah, uh, he wears a socks pulled up. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then, um, Caitlin, when he was talking about that, I just I started thinking about sort of like all your bracelets. Yeah. So it's sort of like a, a really great detail. Now, did, did that exist because she, had, she gave her that thing that she wrapped around? Or like, how did something like that? Well, come about I like think just it, even something as really detailed different. as like you know well they were initially because that's where Jaden's character cut herself right okay. and so she had a ton of bracelets on each arm to cover where she you know she she put those there herself so they it's where she initially cuts herself and I guess that was kind of a thing that wardrobe thought that um a lot of other people w would do in um I think that was kind of more of a wardrobe thing. I mean, that's a wonderful I wouldn't, example. I, I wouldn't have ever thought of that, I don't think. And that was kind of a trial and error thing that we did with with, um, with Joy, my sister, who does, did the costuming along with, with Mirren. And we were going back and forth to figure out what gift Grace was going to give to Jaden. And we, we also knew just from through wardrobe department from the very beginning we knew that Jaden had to be covering up this area right. of herself whether it be long sleeve shirts which she wears a lot of even on really hot days or <laughs> and and the idea of bracelets just kind of organically came out of that and but for a while we didn't know what she was going to be making making her, uh, Jaden and because we, we wanted it to be something that that grace creates and we we're talking about jackets that she would like Put patches on, and, and I don't know. Or like dazzle all, them, or something. Yeah, we're like going through all kinds of different <laughs> yeah. things, and then um, uh, my my girlfriend Nikki, she she thought I was, I was we we're thinking like some kind of bracelet would be cool, and she she found that stuff and and did like a mock up. And I was like, oh, it's perfect. All right, so Keith, you're on the hot seat now. So we know that you're in the short. Yeah. And you don't have necessarily like an acting background <laughs> like some of the other actors, or haven't been acting as long as them. Mm -hmm. What were some of like your preconceived notions of like filmmaking and acting and that type of thing versus the reality? I don't really have any. I kind of like dropped everything at the door and was like, let me just try to ingest as much as I can. And I just shut the hell up and sat in the corner and just kind of watched everything go on. And uh, just try to learn as I as I go, and not try to you know judge before I get into it. And uh, it came out cool because I had a lot of people that were able to teach me things, and the way that they execute, and the way that they um, maintain themselves, you know, because it's a lot of work, time and time and time after again. And so just watching the tenacity that everyone else had, like, really was inspiring. So it was chill. It was cool. And how did you two find each other? It was a really hard hard journey to find. I mean, there's something there's something about Keith that uh, he's, he's not going to vocalize because he's also a very humble, great human, but he, he uh, there, there's something very truthful and authentic that is really hard to find. I mean, Keith is, is one, he's, a, he's an incredible actor who has whether he says it or not, he, he like has a method to his madness. <laughs> but he came in and, and read these lines, and it was the first time that I felt moved by them, genuinely moved by them. And I sent it around to our other producers, and it was just an immediate yes. Like, thank goodness that we found. Well, so, now going back to backstory, so how much backstory did you give your character? Um, I basically just took on the character as if it was me. Like, I kind of just went 
to that place of, of neglect and kind of not wanting really anything to do with no one and kind of being sort of uh, passive aggressive, um, but aggressive when necessary physically. Uh, I just went to a place where, where I can, you know, I can identify with that, not wanting to like get with the outside world and right. isolate yourself. And so I just basically went there within my own self and kind of came out on screen. And between takes, did you find that you like stayed in that vibe or you were? I mean, you came up to me on that, the first day that I met you. We had a big day where we all kind of introduced ourselves. Yeah. And you said, I just want you to know that Marcus does not trust you or anybody. And so I'm not going to be trusting you or I'm going to stay away from you. And it was like that the whole film. I even remember on the last day, we never we never talked, we never sat at the same table at lunch, nothing. And I thought, you know, on the, on the last day, I thought, well, surely we're fine now. And there was only like one seat, I think, and it was like at the same table as him. And I sat down, he instantly got up and was like, all right, we're going through <laughs> yeah, this to the end. The character. Yeah. We are going to the end. <laughs> it really wasn't until South by where it was like we actually finally had a conversation yeah. of like yeah, recognizing each other. Yeah, he was a completely other. different person. Totally when we different had person. like interviews, I was like, "Whoa, who is this?" No one like, knew who this person was. No one knew who you were. He's a yeah. really, he's brilliant, but you just, uh, you, I mean, you barely ever spoke. You were just like completely on your own. Yeah. He can He was just like this weird, quiet wave that would just kind of come in and come out. And the head shaving scene, I was like. Well, you know, I was just gonna I, say I feel like we did like two takes exactly, of that, three takes yeah. of that, and it, the first day, I mean, it killed me. I cried through that whole scene, and I didn't want to cry in that scene. I was like, this is not my time, you know. I'm gonna cry in every scene, right? But I couldn't not. It was just so moving, and it didn't, it didn't seem to take anything for him to do it because he was, he understood. It's like I feel like with everybody, even like the kids. Like there's these like kind of universal truths that are kind of within all of them and so it's not that we are these people or that we, but we've experienced pain and we've experienced love and we've experienced heartbreak or longing or, or whatever those things are for each individual person and it's like tapping into that and using that as a universal feeling for the character you know we know these people right and I think that that's I mean yeah, right I think I that's why that. so many people from different walks of life can identify with the film because yeah. If you don't know shit else, you know struggle. You know, whether you're a struggling rapper or an old dude who can't get his money right. Like, we all understand trying to overcome some shit. And so, like, each of these characters are trying to overcome their own struggles in their own ways, but it all coalesces into that central understanding of, of, of trying to move forward. So, being that this is an independent film round table, and we know that indie film has its limitations budget-wise and such, a, a scene that comes to mind is, is the car scene when Bree's character is like beating the hell out of it. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, did you rent a double car? Did, like was, whose car was that? Did they know that it was going to get like beat up? You know, like what was the windshield? Nope. Was the windshield an actual windshield? Like tell us a little bit about that whole situation. It was, it was a car that was rented from a production place. Um, they knew that we were going to bash the real windshield and that we were in charge of replacing whatever we bashed before we took it back to them. Um, and so a lot of it had, had was just a great job by our producers and our line producers and they just getting all that set up. Um, but, I mean, I can't tell you how many times people came up to me and said, no more than three hits. Like if Bree's gonna do one, they should. They Bree should not be doing this. And they wanted to figure out a way to put goggles on her. <laughs> I <laughs> thought of that yeah. when I was no, about that one. <laughs> well, I, I didn't really do that. I didn't really tell you. I didn't really tell you that. that. Like, I, but I did. T well, I told Bree like right before she went on because we only had one take. So whatever was gonna happen was what was gonna end up in the movie. We shot it with two cameras, and and we. We, it was right before our like two in the morning lunch, and I. I think it actually might have even been before midnight. I think that was oh, the rush. Was that oh, it had to be before because it was loud. Oh yeah, it was that's the neighbors. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's what it was. Um, and and I, re I I I remember going up to Bree right before, and telling her, to just if if anything, if she feels anything hitting her face, to stop. Like if any, <laughs> well, any that was, that's an was coming answer. in that area to to stop and, but then I also, 
I also knew Brie enough at that point to to think that she was probably just gonna go for it. But, but that was that was how I left it, and then I just went and watched the monitor. I I mean, there was a stunt guy there. He showed me how to steady my how to climb up on the car because there was now that I think about it of course because we were renting a car they were very concerned about where I stood on the roof of the car as to not dent right. <laughs> so you could only replace the windshield oh, yeah, not like yeah. I didn't even think about the auto I thought it was for my safety I realized it was for financial car <laughs> issues yeah. but they showed me how to stand on it they showed me how to hold the bat and the bat also had like nails on it so that it would smash easier so I had to learn how to you know do that and then it was kind of this rush thing because we had been working on other scenes and we were working on kind of more intense scenes where me and Caitlin in the front of the house talking. And so through working on that, we were running out of time to get this car thing done before our deadline. And so explain it to me. And I don't know, like the, the whole three hits thing, like vaguely enters my memory of being told that by the, like, the stunt guy. But it just didn't matter because I, I think what happened for me was that I, I had played this character because this was like our last week of shooting last couple of days of shooting and it was like I mean it might have been our second to last day and I, I had spent you know two three weeks playing this character that was all about listening to Norwegian death metal and getting myself to this peak of like madness and insanity and then just holding it down and suppressing it and I think I needed this release I needed to scream at the top of my lungs or do anything to just like get whatever was inside of me out and so they just said you know hit it and then if it doesn't if it doesn't work the first time re- you know we'll reset and I hit it and it like kind of worked but I was like mm. like it, you kind of like go like oh that feels kind of cool and then I did it again and I cracked it and the second it kind of did a big crack I kind of went a little mad in my head and was like I gotta break this thing through. I I just couldn't stop so cool in my it. mind until I smashed the entire thing through. Until there was a hole in it, I couldn't stop, and I kept going. And the one thing they did say to me was they were like, "Don't look at the window." I mean, it did. I was just like in it. <laughs> I, I went on for so long. I didn't even know how long I went on for until it was done. And then I was like, <sighs> you know, like looking at this window, and I'm shaking like, yeah. And I was like, you know, said the line, "Okay, now we can get out of here." And, and, and laughed, and I was like, no! You know, it was like this just, everyone was freaking out. It was so right? cool. It was so I was cool. watching it. So it was so awesome. Because I think it was like, really? the smashing of the windshield was just like, everything for everybody. You know, yeah. it was like the smashing through of the whole thing for everybody. And there is something that I realized that was really poetic and really important about me actually smashing it all the way through that felt right to me and I didn't know until now that I watched the movie. Like, it just feels like she is opening everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's really interesting, and again, sort of from a production standpoint, because you could have made the decision to say, we're going to replace it, we're going to put candied glass, she's going to have two hits, and it's going to crack. But what happened, I think, is that you guys were like, let's just see what happens. Nobody, you, no, certainly no one knew the outcome because it was the actual windshield, so you didn't know how many sort of like licks it takes to get to the center of the tootsie path, <laughs> right? I like that we're just giving away all the best parts of the movie in the center. Right? I would hope, though, that people would see the movie before they'd watch this. Yeah. Or, I don't know, we've had conversations about this. I never watch interviews until after I see a movie, but you like to watch it before a movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I usually watch it after. What would we talk about, you know? It's like... I know. Like, we made a movie, we, we shot it. Yeah. We don't want to tell you anything about it. We don't want to talk about, 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 about the actual movie, but this is, I'm Bree. Thanks for watching. Um, all right, so I think this might be the most important, and you can't sneak and look, the most important question that I have for all of you. Um, I'd like to know who wrote the rap. <laughs> Wait, which one? John? Good question. I just did the beat. Yeah, I wrote the whole thing. <laughs> no, what happened is, like, Destin, he had written the script, beautiful script, I gave him his props before I say that the rap he wrote <laughs> was horrible. And so, so you no, was, it, I mean, it wasn't that bad. I just didn't think that, like, it, it captured really. I thought my rap was all right. It was all right. It was all right. All, all things considered. <laughs> It was alright. And so I just went back and rewrote the whole thing and actually that I think that was a little too much. So we just kinda like chopped it up and cut it up and came out with the final product that we have. So basically like he he wrote the template for it. Right. And I wrote the lyrics. Like so. when he rewrote the whole thing. 
<laughs> yeah, it was like, fuck my mom. And I was going to say, there's a lot of like, staring going on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And which, a lot of intensity, product, which is, yeah. That's cut down version, so it was, it came out cool. I'm glad we both that's collaborated. Like, yeah, yeah, there's a rap at the end of the movie that he the wrote. Credits. I went yeah. to an ADR session and I was like, "Where's Keith?" And I was talking to him. He's like, "Oh, he's writing a rap outside." And he's and I'm like, "How does he do that so fast?" Yeah, yeah there's, there's two really... in the movie. There's two in the movie that Keith wrote that are awesome, and they're they're on the soundtrack as well. Well, a lot of you guys, like on this side of the room at least, all have musical. Backgrounds? Yes, yeah, no? Oh, wow, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We should yeah. make a band. Totally. I know. Yeah. Yeah. The short term band. band. The short term band. A TV well. show <laughs> and oh, a band. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 I will, I will say I'm still, I'm still waiting for someone, and I, I'm just going to be totally selfish and bring it up, because I'm still waiting for someone to come up with the question of, did you draw that portrait of <laughs> I just sort of like assumed you didn't, but did you? Oh, I did. Oh. <laughs> I drew several. Like, and, Destin, and my Destin is texted totally me. totally genuine. I did not see it until we shot it. I drew like six. It was so like good. the Titanic moment of the movie. I drew like oh, six so at my, like at home. Right. And then brought them all in. Oh and uh, and then Destin. went out and bought like colored I bought like pencils. colored pencils and like okay. this book and everything and then Dustin was like just do one during the take and then that one was so gloriously bad <laughs> that we had way. that we right. just used the one yeah. that I drew because I that one I was like well we'll never use this so I can just focus on doing the scene with Bree and I'm just like doing this terrible picture and then Dustin was like that's so bad we have to put it in the movie <laughs> and actually I just thought of another your story where did that come from because that's that's really beautiful the octopus thing I was I mean, it was always a huge challenge to me in the writing process once I got to one of those scenes that in that were the most frightening to write because they could, I mean, confession scenes are always the worst for me to watch, usually. They could veer in yeah. a terrible direction. And, and, a, and especially with these characters who don't, None of them want to talk about what there's is going on. There's sort of a on. secretive communication. Yeah, there's no, there's no right. real straightforward communication yeah. between... I mean, Marcus's character uses, uses his art, and so does Jaden's character. They use their art to kind of communicate clues as to what's going on inside. And, and that, that story just came out of the necessity of figuring out what Jaden might do. You know, what she might reveal. Yeah, that was one of my favorite scenes. That was, that was an audition scene actually, and um, I got it the night before my callback, and I was like, "Geez, this is a really long thing." And I usually like to go into my auditions with like no sides and just really memorized. And I was like, "I'm just gonna write it down." So I wrote it down on a piece of paper. I stuck it in my pocket, and I just did it like I was reading the story, like I did in the in the scene in the movie. It was really just. A, like an awesome scene because it was just like of like you could totally it's such a sad story when you actually listen to it and really think about it it's such a sad scene and it really really tells her story yeah. when you have nothing else to turn to you turn to art to express yeah. yourself like that's a cool ass message it's so true like if you don't have anyone to talk to like even if you can't draw you fucking you draw man if you can't make music well you still make it because it's all you have and like that's it that's a cool little point there, like, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed like all the characters had something that they turned to yeah. to get them through. Yeah, definitely. That's what I love most about everyone's characters, that they had something inside of them that they didn't really want to talk to anyone else, so they kind of expressed it in a different way. Yeah, and, like, that reminds me of, like, your, like, huge, like, Spanish family. Like, like that's not <laughs> something I, you know. Yeah. Mason turns to <laughs> gastronomy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Straight to the kitchen. Oh I've got to make some cupcakes. <laughs> but yeah, that was like a nice surprise too. It's like, oh, no, I that, guess. You I, know. When I got the script, there's all these moments peppered in throughout where Mason speaks Spanish. And I remember thinking, oh, it must not be this role. This guy's Spanish. <laughs> and uh, and I like started being like, who do they want? Wait, who do they want me to try out for? <laughs> and then I got it's such a glorious reveal that yeah. you, you see these little moments of he's speaking Spanish throughout the film, and you realize, oh, he was he was he grew up in this foster family. Yeah, again, not something you would expect. That was, when my, that was when I was like, that's that was a moment. In a conventional way at all. Right. It's yeah. a reveal that you have to piece it together. And go, oh, right. When, when I, I first read the script, I was like, this. 
well, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, and when I got mean? to that thought, well, that was like a moment where I was like, oh. I remember reading it and being like, this guy. <laughs> I can't wait to oh, Skype him. Man, him. I can't wait to Skype him. And now that you know every single secret of our movie. Yeah. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. There's more secrets.